Hi, Father Barry and Mrs. Steve are here for you with chapter 9, page 77. Different gifts, the same spirit, okay? But you can have different gifts, but we all can be pulling together for the same cause. That's the Catholic faith for you. Look at those young people. They're all pulling together on one side. They hope to hope to be able to pull their side in to, to win. This is a lot of fun when you can do this, okay? And, of course, there's somebody on the other end, too. <laughs> so, uh, but... The whole idea is that the church, we are all trying to uh, be on God's side. Okay, we're going to do the prayer. And you can look into your book and see the prayer there before we leave the picture. We pray, when you send forth your breath, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. Everyone, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit fill, fill our, our hearts, hearts with, with light and lead us to, to all truth. truth. Amen. Well, the both of us are starting out here, just thinking about spirit. Um, Mrs. Stever, you, you definitely have some spirit to you. You have some spunk. Okay. Did anyone ever tell you that? Uh, yes. I have to say, Father, thank you. But yes, a lot of, I guess, spirit, energy, you know, yeah. Uh, did you did you have that when you were young? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Were you sporty? Did you play sports? <laughs> I did. Yeah. Yep. yep, I did. But yeah, I do. I have I I guess I am a person that I guess has a lot of spirit. I kind of was nicknamed more like a cheerleader. You yeah. Know? yeah. Somebody right. that no matter what you were involved in, whether it be anything, sports, art, whatever, I would always cheer for them. You know, oh, yeah. tell them, you know, a lot of spirit, Excellent. you know, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. And this chapter, it says, what does it mean to say that a person or group has spirit? Having spirit is an important quality of a person. God has given the church the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, yeah, I think it, it it's easier to play on teams or be part of organizations where you got some people that are fired up, got some people that are encouraging, got some people are excited, okay? If nobody is... Then it's uh, it's kind of rough. Uh, yeah. I, I I remember I was I'm a baseball fan, and there was uh not so long ago when the Washington Nationals were playing, and they had a player on their team that got everybody excited, and he wasn't the best player. He's one of the worst players, but he got everybody dancing <laughs> around in the dugout to this baby shark. Baby song, shark, okay? I remember right, Father. And yeah. after a while, the whole stadium started catching on. And everybody's doing the baby shark. Well, it got the team so spirited, so excited that they started winning a lot of their games, and they went and won the World Series. No, now the church we have someone like that, but it's not just a. Uh, you know, baby shark baseball <laughs> player, you know. It's, it's the very spirit of God who has come to give us life, to give us energy, to guide us, to move us. That's the Holy Spirit. So can you tell us more about the Holy Spirit as we go into the book, page 78? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. The work of the Holy Spirit. The faith focus in this chapter that we're going to learn about is what is the work of the Holy Spirit in the church today? And then the faith vocabulary is charisms, graces or gifts given by the Holy Spirit to build up the church on earth for the good of all people and the needs of the world. Sacred tradition, the passing on of the teachings of Christ by the church through the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Let's read about the images of the Holy Spirit. Let's read it together. Christians are people of the Holy Spirit. The whole Spirit, Holy Spirit lives within the whole church and within each member of the church. The church uses many images to help us understand the presence and work of the Holy Spirit. Here are two of those images. A mighty wind. When Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would come to them, the disciples were not hearing a new word. They heard about the work of a mighty wind. A ruah, uh, the Hebrew word for spirit in the story of creation. The breath 
of God, this mighty wind is also the breath or spirit of God the disciples prayed about in the Psalms. Remember, blue ink is scripture from the Bible. Let's read what it says from the Psalm. When you send forth your breath, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. The spirit promised by the prophets later in the history of the Israelites, the prophets often spoke of God's promise to send a new spirit upon all people. Ezekiel wrote, again, scripture in the Bible, I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. The church has come to understand that the spirit in the Old Testament is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Holy Trinity. It gives us an example at the bottom of a stony heart. For example, lying to avoid being embarrassed. And then it describes a new heart that replaces it. For example, telling the truth. Father Barry, let's go and go on to page 79 on the Holy Spirit in our church. So as we're at the page 79, we have that stained glass image. There's a lot of good, colorful pictures in this book. I like all the color to it. And Holy Spirit is uh, often depicted in lots of colors and light, but often in the symbol of a dove or a bird coming down, something in the form like of a bird, but hovering down over us, coming to bless us. And so Mary is the first one to get that blessing and then the apostles get it. They become priests. All the church gets it eventually. And so chapter says, the Holy Spirit in the church. At the very beginning of his public ministry, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. From Luke chapter four, verse 18. The Gospels tell us that the Holy Spirit was at work in the life of Jesus from the announcement of his birth to his ascension and promised that the Holy Spirit would come to the disciples. After receiving the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, Peter courageously and clearly preached about Jesus. Moved by the Holy Spirit, over 3,000 people asked to be baptized that day. Now, that was an exciting moment in the Bible because St. Peter was preaching and everybody wanted to come up and have their lives changed by God, have the Holy Spirit help them to believe, to get excited, to start doing more of what things Jesus would want in the world through us. Um, so that's exciting when you see that. You know, sometimes I've been at a big conference or a retreat or an event where where we all were getting excited. God was like in the room in a special way, encouraging us. And everybody wanted a, a new change, something better in our lives with God. And you know what it that felt like? It felt like a, um, one of these slow, uh, slow image photos where you get a, a garden that has no flowers in it, and then you film it through April, and all of a sudden it's an entire tulip garden with glorious color and I feel sometimes God like he does in nature also brings glorious colors and life and fragrance to people where he comes and just renews us okay he renews us where the spirit of the Lord is upon us something great happens so the church is the temple of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit blesses us each with charism or special graces that we are to use to help build up the church. Charisms, graces. Father Virginia says that a grace or charism in his life is kindness, 
He's living to be an example of kindness as much as possible. That is the goal of his life. That's what he thinks is God's special grace to him. St. Paul wrote to the church in the Corinthians, chapter 12, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. It's about the Holy Spirit just loving to be the one that inspires all kinds of things, okay? Gifts, service, okay? Our great works. God delights in seeing us come to life. Call it up. So I'd like you to think of a way you can work with the Holy Spirit to build up the church on earth. But how can you bring some color, some light to the church? You know, I, I can just say that when teenagers take part in things, preteens take part, it brings life to us right away. We're glad to see you practice faith, you know, and when you're around. It just, it does charge us up. We're older, okay? And little kids, when they see you doing it, they want to do it too, because they look up to you a lot, okay? So as we transition to the next page, I would like to have you look at a picture of the saint that is mentioned under faith-filled people on page 79. I'd like you to look at her as I, as I read something. Elizabeth Ann Seaton's mentioned the top of your page as, you know, the saint for this. She had a great charism and what was is, you know, to reach out for people, for children, people that are sick, you know, for women to get more involved in the church. There's a picture of her. Unfortunately, everybody wore dark colors back then, but I can tell you that her life was just filled with color, life and faith, fruits of the spirit. But she... You know, she today, 200 years later, because she was about 200 years ago, everything's named after her. Seton Hall College, Seton Hospitals, Seton High School. Okay, there's Seton things all across the United States. And there's the Seton Sisters, you know, they, the Sisters of Charity. There's all these hundreds of women that are now involved in the church because of what she first started here in Maryland. So she's a saint, though, that was famous in Maryland, up in a place called Emmitsburg and in Baltimore. Her feast day is January 4th. I'm going to move us on to the next page now, to page 80, okay? So thanks for looking at our saint. We're on page 80 now. You can see a couple of young people. I think they're involved in service, works, okay? It's nice when you have another person doing it with you, too. It's a lot easier, I think work together. Uh, although we certainly can get a lot done by ourselves, but it's more enjoyable when we have another partner or even the whole church doing something. Elizabeth Ann Seton was not just a solo act. She was always getting other people involved and a lot of people doing something. And so Maryland's great saint. The Holy Spirit today, Holy Spirit is active in the church today. Holy Spirit is our teacher and sanctifier. Let's think of those two titles of the Holy Spirit. You're going to pick one of the ones you like the most and make a little banner of it at the bottom. Our teacher, the Holy Spirit, guides us in understanding and teaching what God has revealed in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit helps the Pope and bishops teach clearly and authentically what God has revealed through tradition and sacred scripture. The Spirit teaches them. It also teaches children or anybody. Sacred tradition is the passing on of the teachings of Christ by the church through the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has a big job to help all the teachings of the church to be right or for us to understand what needs, you know, what needs to be taught better or, or renewed. Okay, so maybe you think of Holy Spirit as your teacher or the teacher of the church. Do you going to going to write teacher down there and kind of decorate it. But maybe you like this title better. Our sanctifier. It's a word you probably don't use very much. What does it mean? The Holy Spirit is the one who makes us holy. Sanctify us, make us holy, whole, blessed. Through the Holy Spirit, we receive sanctifying grace. The gift of holiness that makes us sharers 
In the very life and love of God, we also receive actual graces, the help the Holy Spirit gives us to live as Jesus taught, to actually show God in us. The Holy Spirit makes us one with Christ in each other. The Holy Spirit is and will continue to be at work helping the church prepare for the coming of the kingdom of God. At that time, Christ will come again in glory and his work on earth will be finished. Be like sanctifier or teacher. Or is there another title that just caught your attention? Okay. Sanctifier, I think God wants to make love holy. Sometimes we are more involved with love, what we just want for ourselves. Holiness is shared love and shared love from God into us experience together. That would be a sanctified love from the sanctifier. All right, I'd like you to write in either sanctifier or teacher or another title in there, okay? And I'm going to talk for about 30 seconds as you write that. And if you need more time, just pause the tape, okay? Because if you think there was just a great saint there in Maryland, there's another great saint just up the road, up Route 95, up toward Philadelphia. And it's another woman. We've had some great saints here in America and some great women saints. She also has a college named after her, okay? She has streets and cities named after her. And the amazing thing about her is that she was very rich, one of the richest families in the country. And she wanted, when a lot of money came to her as the heiress, she said, all right, who needs the most help from the church today? She picked two categories, people. They're gonna be depicted right in this page 81, okay, page 81, and uh, Mrs. Stever, you're going to get us going with that. Okay. Our church makes a difference, page 81, St. Catherine Drexel. The Holy Spirit is always at work in the world. He is the same Spirit who is at work in the life of Jesus during his work on earth. From the time of the apostles, the Holy Spirit has helped the church continue the work or mission Jesus gave to his disciples. Some Christians leave their homes and families and travel great distances to preach and live the gospel. Many leave their own country and work with people living in other lands. We call these people missionaries. Catherine Drexel was a missionary who lived and worked in the United States. She left her home and family to live the gospel. She used her family inheritance to work with Native Americans and African Americans in the United States. Today, members of the religious community founded by St. Catherine Drexel continue the missionary work she began. Let's look at our Catholic identity and fruits of the Holy Spirit. In Galatians, St. Paul lists the signs that show that the Holy Spirit is alive in the church. They are called the fruits of the Holy Spirit. They are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The tradition of the church also includes goodness, modesty, and chastity as fruits of the Holy Spirit. Let's go to page 82 and learn about what difference does your faith make in your life. All right, so I talked about a priest friend, Father Virginus, and he likes to try to live in kindness. I think of a person in our parish that grew up there, and I think he's just known for goodness. It's just, he's just a good person, and people say, hey, you need a favor, always call on him. Young person, he's got energy. He's always looking to help people. And I have to say that 
He's like a poster boy or a flag bearer of goodness. You know, lots of fruits of the Holy Spirit, different ones you can have. But goodness, I think of him when I think of goodness. He's done some favors for me here. If I need something, he helps out. You know, that's just the way he is. He's goodness walking around on two feet <laughs> with a big heart. He don't have that stony heart that this book was talking about. His heart is not hard. His heart is soft and caring for others. And he spreads the gospel just by being himself, being a young person. So now we're going to pray that we all can help spread the gospel, okay, as the church, as members of the church. So everybody, let's go to page 83. Prayer for the spread of the gospel. We get close to the end of the chapter and we do a prayer. Everything's got to be done in prayer. That's how we get to start being sanctifiers. You know? God helps us sanctify the world. He sanctifies us and he blesses the world through us like that man in goodness. I'm going to lead the prayer. You do the all part, okay? And Mrs. Stevens is going to join in with you. Let us join together and pray that we cooperate with the Holy Spirit and share the gospel with everyone. Father, you will your church to be the sacrament of salvation for all people. Send the Holy Spirit to inspire the hearts of your people to continue the saving work of Christ everywhere. Yep mean that for you watching grant us this through our lord jesus christ who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen hey i hope they remember some of the terms and words images we use too. today let's see i do too so okay Ready? Use the words from the chapter to complete the sentences. So number one, blank and blank are two images for the Holy Spirit. Do you remember this? Yeah, Father's giving you a little bit. Wind and breath. Wind and breath. So put those two words there. The Holy Spirit blesses us with to continue the work of Christ. Remember? That's a tough one. I that think, is. I charismans. Have trouble with this one. Charismans. Charisms. Ca charisms. 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 C H A R I S M S. That's, remember, it's Father Char Jean, Virginis was like kindness, charism, and this right. br young brother, goodness is his charism. Special fruit or spirit of God going on. All right, what's okay, the third one? Okay, third one. The Holy Spirit dwells in the today. So what are we? A people of God and we are the church, right? That dwells in the church. And then you might have chosen this in your activity as one of them. The Holy Spirit is the or the one who makes us holy. And we're learning sanctifier you might have chosen that sanctifier sanctifier then the holy spirit helps the and the to authentically teach what jesus taught yeah the holy spirit even helps the people at the top of the church right to get things right so who is the head of our church the pope and then under the pope are our bishops so hopefully we helped you because that was a little bit of a challenge on some of those. Mm -hmm. But that's what we at least learned in this chapter. So the Holy Spirit helps the church teach about Jesus and St. Peter and other apostles did. The Holy Spirit guides the church to pass on the teaching of Christ. The Holy Spirit sanctifies the church to make the church holy. Okay, we're coming at the end, so turn the page, get your parent or whoever's helping you, because this page is the part which is called Chapter 9, which we're doing with my family. It's about things that you can do this week to just help what we just learned together in your chapter. The parents read it more thoroughly, and 
Under sharing God's word, read together 1 Corinthians and emphasize that the Holy Spirit gives each of the baptized special graces. Praying the prayer that we did together on page 82. Let's pray. You can pray that this week together as a family. Making a difference. There's three opportunities that are all good. I just happened to do the first one. Take turns telling one another what special talents or gifts you see in each other. Encourage each other to use their gifts to spread the gospel. Many times as a family, you're very busy and you forget about recognizing special gifts that God has given you and each other as a family. It would be a good opportunity this week to talk about your special talents as individuals and your gifts and what you recognize you have in each other as a family. And so, Father, if you can close us in a prayer and enjoy mm -hmm. your week this week, boys and girls. Yeah, did you enjoy this chapter? Absolutely. The Holy too. Spirit is just always around us and always there for us, and always we pray to the Holy Spirit for things it was every good. day. It was, it was good. good. And, and, I, and uh, if we ever do have a tug of war, like that. I want you on my side because you got spirit. <laughs> Yay. Got okay. Spirit. I'd I say let's go. Side, okay? Yes. All right. So I think where God, where God is, is goodness. Where God is, is the good news. So I pray that in a world that needs good news, I pray that, that God is in you, with you, and me. And I pray that we can show the good news to the world this week. Thank you, everyone. God be with you. See you next time. God bless you.